Oh, hey, Boba Josh, did you see the new Star Wars novels they're doing? A new canon novel with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin around the time of Kato Pneumonia? Well, that sounds pretty cool. And they're also gonna do a novel in canon with Luke Skywalker and Lando around the time of the sequel trilogy. Are you serious? <laughs> What's up everybody, it's Josh coming at you from Nerdvengers Tower as per usual, and this should be a pretty fun video for most unless you're like Boba Josh and you think that somehow Disney might retcon the sequel trilogy. I don't know how many times I've told the Knights of Melvin it ain't gonna happen. So let's get into this report and I, I have some fun speculation about what I think this could mean as well. And actually we did briefly talk about this on the live stream earlier today. You should definitely be checking out the live streams over on our live streaming channel. But this is pretty interesting and still right now, they are trending. Both Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi are both trending on Twitter because of this news that just came out today, okay? So I'm reading on StarWars.com here. It says, new books starring Luke and Lando, Obi-Wan and Anakin, and more are revealed and exclusive, okay? StarWars.com is thrilled to reveal four new books featuring never-before-told tales from across the Star Wars saga. Star Wars Shadow of the Sith, a novel by Adam Christopher takes place after Return of the Jedi and finds Luke Skywalker and Lando Calrissian on a mission to locate Exegol. Star Wars Brotherhood by Michael Chen follows Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker amidst the chaos of the Clone Wars and the Skywalker's rise to Jedi Knight. Uh, and then there's a couple other ones that I'm really not that interested in. Um, and I want to kind of just get into this. Let's begin with talking about, actually, let's, let's do this one first. Let's, let's, let's do the good news for most people first. Okay. So by Mike Chen, um, this book, which is called brotherhood, let's read the description right here. And then I'll speculate a little bit about that. And then I'll talk all about Luke Skywalker, find an exit goal. I know you're pretty excited for that. Okay. Now here we go. This is coming out in May of next year right pretty interesting stuff guys and we just heard that maybe obi-wan kenobi himself the the show not himself actually will be coming out uh in may as well let's read on obi-wan kenobi and anakin skywalker must stem the tide of the raging clone wars and forge a new bond as jedi knights the clone wars have begun battle lines are being drawn throughout the galaxy with every world that joins the separatists the peace guarded by the jedi order is slipping through their fingers after an explosion devastates kato nemoidia a jewel of the trade federation the republic is blamed and the fragile neutrality of the planet is threatened the jedi dispatch obi-wan kenobi one of the order's most gifted diplomatic minds to investigate the crimes and maintain the balance that has begun to dangerously shift as Obi-Wan investigates with the help of heroic Nemoidian guard, he finds himself working against the Separatists who hope to draw the planet into their conspiracy and senses the sinister hand of Asajj Ventress in the mists that cloak the planet. Amid the brewing chaos, Anakin Skywalker rises to the rank of Jedi Knight despite the mandate that Obi-Wan travel alone and his former master's insistent that he listen this time Anakin's headstrong determination means nothing can stop him from crashing the party and bringing along a promising but conflicted youngling. That is likely Ahsoka, by the way. Once a Padawan to Obi-Wan, Anakin now finds himself on equal but uncertain footing with the man who raised him. The lingering friction between them increases the danger for everyone around them. The two knights must learn a new way to work together, and they must learn quickly to save Kato Nemoya's and its people from the fires of war. To overcome this threat, they must face, or they must grow beyond master and apprentice. They must stand together as brothers. Okay, so let's talk about that for just a second before we talk about Luke and Exegol. Okay, so freaking awesome. Sounds really cool. Remember, this This is a line from the prequels where he says, like, I've saved you eight times and uh, Anakin's like nine times. And he's like, no, that business on Kato Nemoidia doesn't doesn't count. Right. So that's a, an established thing. Very fun that we're going to go back and visit that. But it's not just that we're going to see this story told around the same time that the Obi-Wan Kenobi series is coming out. But 
the mention of a younger Padawan, the mention of maybe a young Ahsoka being in this as well, and understanding the dynamic of uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan and just everybody and, and what is going on between those two at the time is really interesting because there are rumors, and I believe these rumors, that in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series itself, we will see many flashbacks to Clone Wars era times during the show, that we're going to get some stuff with Anakin, with Obi-Wan, maybe even with a young Ahsoka being in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. One must wonder, will there be a scene, will there be something in this book that then is seen in the Kenobi show as well? Is that something that they're trying to do, something they're trying to build out? Because it's really clear that they are really trying to double down on that connective tissue, and it's fun that they have these new novels lined up to sort of further explore canon places in the timeline. Super, super cool. So I'm hyped up on this book. Frankly, haven't been excited for a Star Wars novel in some time. The High Republic just isn't my thing. You know, cool if you like it or whatever. But for me, this is really cool, man. And right around the time of Obi-Wan coming out as a show, oh, man, that's that kind of Star Wars love I like, man. Getting into it, reading the book, watching the show, having debates, talking about it with you guys. It's, it's really what I love. So I'm hyped that that's coming. And now... Let's talk about the book that we're all excited for. The reason you're all here watching this video. Let her go. And that is, of course, that, yeah, we're going to see Luke Skywalker looking for Exegol with Lando Calrissian tying directly into the sequel trilogy, including... Rise of Skywalker, and seemingly mostly focused on Rise of Skywalker. So let's read the description here, and then I'll talk a little bit about my feelings about this, okay? Because they are a little bit mixed. Luke Skywalker and Lando Calrissian return in this essential novel set between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. Man! Okay, well, I'll save my thoughts for a second. Okay, here we go. The Empire is dead. Nearly two decades on from the Battle of Endor, the tattered remains of, the, of Palpatine's forces have fled to the farthest reaches of the galaxy. But for the heroes of the New Republic, danger and loss are ever-present companions, even in this newly forged era of peace. Jedi Master Luke Skywalker is haunted by visions of the dark side, foretelling an ominous secret growing somewhere in the depths of space on a dead world called Exegol. The disturbance in the Force is undeniable, and Luke's worst fears are confirmed when his old friend Lando Calrissian comes to him with reports of a new Sith menace. After his daughter was stolen from his arms, Lando searched the stars for any trace of the lost child, but every new rumor only led to dead ends and fading hopes until he crossed path with Ochi of Bestoon, a Sith assassin tasked with kidnapping a young girl. Ochi's true motives remain shrouded to Luke and Lando, for on a junkyard moon, a mysterious envoy of the Sith Eternal have bequeathed a sacred blade to the assassin, promising that it will give him answers to the questions that have haunted him since the Empire's fall. In exchange, he must complete a final mission, return to Exegol with the key of the Sith's glorious rebirth, the granddaughter of Darth Sidious himself, Rey. As Ochi hunts Rey and her parents at the edge of the galaxy, Luke and Lando race into the mystery of the Sith's lingering shadow and aid a young family running for their lives. Okay, so let's get into this. Obviously, I think a lot more people are going to be excited for the Obi-Wan and Anakin thing. You know, Kenobi's going to be a big deal. The sequel trilogy is still the sequel trilogy. You know what I mean? Many people feel pretty harshly towards it. Many people are super triggered uh, by the idea of Disney not retconning. It, the thing, which is crazy to me. I mean, in all seriousness, guys, like they are so clearly not going to retcon it. And this is a sign of new canon stuff that is not just tying together the sequels, but is in that time period between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. And we're going to get more of like Ochi, Luke, and Lando, which directly ties into the rise of Skywalker. Now, look, let me just be honest with you guys. When it comes to the rise of Skywalker, I came out of the theater liking it i saw it a lot of times in theaters and then over time i started to dislike that movie and then i grew to 
to, to really, really dislike that film. So there's some cool things that are going on in The Rise of Skywalker, but it's pretty sloppy, but it has more to do with, I think, just the overall sequels and sort of a lack of a plan and just where we arrive with the sequels, right? Now, I don't hate the sequels as much as many people out there do. I actually still want to continue with these characters and, and find fun and cool stuff out about that time period, and maybe they can fix the sequels right with doing this sort of stuff but i actually think exegol and palpatine and some of the stuff that was going on there is intriguing like it is kind of fun stuff and tying that together with ray is interesting it was just executed really poorly in that movie and it kind of felt like a checklist like a treasure hunt uh that just led to this ending which was really weird between palpatine and ray like did he want her there did he not want her there did he want kylo to kill her or not i'm kind of I'm kind of still confused about that, honestly. And honestly, it seems kind of cool to me. I'm going to check it out. But my one complaint about this book is that it should have happened a long time ago. Like, I think fans were really looking for this kind of content much earlier in the game. We were looking to have the, the explanation of what exactly the First Order was, what exactly was going on with the Big Bad, Luke Skywalker, all these different things. We get it sort of piecemealed out, and there's a lot of mystery there. Now, we now know that this is more or less because they didn't actually have it all figured out, okay? But now they've made the films, and it seems like, not just with this, but with all Star Wars projects moving forward, that they have a much better idea of how this all ties together, and they're trying to have a consistent canon, okay? But I'm sure many of you are furious as heck, just like Boba Josh, so let me know your feelings about all of this stuff in the comment section below. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel to see more of our content. Pop up in your recommended feed, and come on by the live streaming gentlemen y'all fired up about this you super mad about them not retconning the sequels come by in a live stream and you can uh, tell me all about it live and maybe i'll even uh, react to it and, and get angry back at you and we'll have a big old fight on the internet that could be really fun as i always say i hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day and i'll see you in the next video